tradition that affect countless people and can have a profound impact on their everyday lives. It is a silent condition that goes unrecognized by many and often goes undiagnosed. Many myths surround this problem, which can complicate how it is perceived by society. This condition is PTSD. One reason I chose this topic is my own personal experience with PTSD, which I will be discussing later in my presentation. PTSD, short for post-traumatic stress disorder, is defined by the Mayo Clinic as, quote, a mental health condition that's triggered by a terrifying event, either experiencing it or witnessing it. It can be caused by a variety of reasons, such as a plane or car crash, unexpected death of a loved one, wartime combat, sexual abuse, a natural disaster, and more. The events causing PTSD may all be different, but each have a profound impact on the victims. Symptoms of PTSD may appear immediately following the traumatic experience or later. These symptoms include having flashbacks as if the event is being relived, having a physical or emotional reaction to the memory or something that triggers the memory of the event, having nightmares, avoiding any discussion of the event, finding yourself detached from friends and family due to negative mood and personality changes, being easily frightened, and much more. Each person's symptoms may differ based on the extent of the PTSD and simply because there is always variation in how a person responds to a traumatic event. A variety of people can be diagnosed with PTSD following a traumatic experience. The person who directly experienced the event may develop PTSD. Someone who witnessed the event occurring to others could develop it. Someone close to the victim learning of the event may develop the condition. Or a person repeatedly exposed to traumatic events such as policemen or first responders, can develop PTSD and be diagnosed with it. If a person is still dealing with issues involving the event a month after it has occurred, he or she will most likely be diagnosed with PTSD. To diagnose a person, doctors usually perform a physical exam to check for medical problems that could be causing the issue. Next, they perform a psychoanalysis evaluation in which the patient explains their symptoms and the events that led to them. There are several options when it comes to treating PTSD, one of which is therapy. Cognitive therapy is where the patient and therapist speak about what is holding the patient back from recovery. Exposure therapy puts the patient in the situation they fear. They talk and think about the event that caused their PTSD, trying to come to terms with it and eliminate their fear. This method is especially helpful for curing flashbacks and nightmares. Lastly, EDMR, or eye movement desensitization desensitization and reprocessing combines exposure therapy with a set of guided eye movements that help the patient process the traumatic event and change how he or she reacts to it. Along with therapy, those with PTSD can improve their symptoms through medication. Antidepressants help with the symptoms of anxiety and depression and can even improve sleep issues. Anti-anxiety medications relieve severe anxiety, but are usually only used for a short amount of time due to their addictiveness. Prazosin can reduce and eliminate nightmares. However, recent studies have shown that it has no greater effect than that of a placebo. Lastly, support from friends and family is essential to help improve the condition of one suffering with PTSD. Those with the condition struggle due to the obstacles they have to face. Going through the process of having panic attacks, flashbacks, nightmares, and other things is not easy, especially if done alone. It is pivotal for the patient to receive support from others in order to make their path to normalcy as easy and comfortable as possible. It is a long and difficult road, one which I have taken myself. The event that led to my PTSD was a bus crash. On March 22, 2018, the Augusta Prep golf team was riding to a golf tournament in Perry, Georgia. I was sitting near the back of the bus, laying my head against the window and feeling the dull vibration of the bus wheel underneath me as I took a nap. At one point in the ride, I woke up and checked my phone to see where we were, and in this moment, I felt the bus swerve and everything went black. At first, I was confused, but I quickly realized we'd been in a wreck. Upon this realization, I said to myself, please God, don't let me die. This, the blackness that followed felt like an eternity. Those moments were what caused most of my PTSD. The fact that I could not control whether I lived or died, that the blackness would stay forever that I would not get to say goodbye to my friends and family, that I would never get to grow up and live, that my life was completely out of my hands. However, the darkness did cease, and I woke up at the front of the bus having been thrown across it. The bus was completely torn open as I could see the road and the sky above us. A few seats were thrown out of the bus along with some golf bags. The seats still in the bus were crumpled, 
and worst of all, our coach's unconscious body was hanging limp over the torn open section of the bus, causing all of us to believe that he was dead. His seat was not even in the bus, and even he was barely in it. We had hit a truck carrying a trailer of cement blocks parked on the side of the road. As soon as Mia and I made contact with each other, we screamed. I then looked at my fellow team members, and we all immediately made sure everyone was okay, despite being in shock over what had just occurred. Eventually, some men broke the back of the bus and carried us to the side of the road, where we struggled to comprehend what had just occurred. I can still feel the breeze that surrounded us that day, and smell the foul odor of gasoline and motor oil that filled the air. Cole consoled Mia and I as we were crying and let me use his phone. I called my mom and told her we had been in an awful wreck and that I could not walk at that point, then began to throw up, so a first responder had to take the phone. But the call ended because we had no signal, which I am sure caused her to panic even more. While this occurred, a first responder named Wayne helped me. He was extremely kind and helped me to stay calm while we were waiting for the ambulances to arrive. I will never forget the care and kindness he showed to me that day. Once the ambulances arrived, we were all taken to the hospital where we later met our families and returned home. Following the accident, I had panic attacks at least once a day, usually twice, for five months, some even occurring in school, where I would just ask to go to the restroom and try to stop the panic attack from occurring, or just let it happen for a few minutes. During these attacks, I felt like I could not breathe, that the world was caving in around me, that I was completely alone and boxed in, and overall, just felt a sense of overwhelming hopelessness and sadness as I cried and tried to maintain my breath. Oftentimes, I would get flashbacks of the wreck, feeling as if I was reliving the memory over again. These flashbacks would often cause more panic attacks to occur. Driving and riding in cars was also an issue, as I would become tense and anxious each time. Gradually, these feelings dissipated. However, even today, I sometimes feel like I am in the wreck again or feel the impact of a wreck when I am making a turn worry someone may hit me. I'm anxious every time I get into a car. The panic attacks and flashbacks were only severe from March to July. Then they began to fade away and I only had them once a week. However, in October of my junior year, the flashbacks and panic attacks came back worse than ever, making going to school extremely difficult. I do not know why my symptoms returned, but they eventually went away by December. I continued to have panic attacks and such once a month for many months. But now, I hardly ever get panic attacks and flashbacks, and even when I do get them, they are not as severe, because I have learned to control them and not to let the flashbacks scare me. There was a silver lining, though. I learned so much from this event and have grown to be a better person because of it. In the moments of darkness where I did not know whether I was going to wake up or not, I worried I would not be able to say goodbye to my family. I learned that I need to cherish every moment because you never know who will get tomorrow. Living life like this, appreciating every little thing and the fact that I get to live such an amazing life has turned me into the best version of myself. Seeing the good in everything and appreciating life has opened my eyes to how wonderful the world is. This is called post-traumatic growth, a common occurrence after someone undergoes a trauma. One example of this is my newfound appreciation of sunsets, like the one shown. On the ride home from the wreck, I witnessed the most beautiful sunset, and I was so thankful that I had the opportunity to see it that I was alive to see it. To me, sunsets symbolize how thankful I am to have lived through another day and to have the opportunity to live in such a beautiful world. This is one of the many things I now never take for granted. Additionally, I learned a lot about PTSD. First, I learned that if you are struggling with PTSD, you need to seek help. I struggled immensely with it for months, yet I did not tell anyone of the extremity of my struggles. I went through the pain alone, but when I finally told someone what I was going through, I felt so much better. One day, Mia and I were talking and somehow the rep came up and I finally confessed to her how much I had been struggling. And to my surprise, so was she. We helped each other in so many ways through supporting each other through our struggles and letting each other know we were not alone. Telling people about your struggles and seeking help is so important, whether it be for PTSD, anxiety, or if you are simply worried about a test or anything at all. Having a support system and letting others help you is how you get better. Second, I learned that you never know what is going on in someone's life. I struggled with PTSD and did not show it for months because I was scared to be vulnerable and tell others what I was going through. Through myself doing this, I realized anyone could be doing it. 
Anyone could be struggling or going through a difficult time in their life and tell no one. This is why we need to be kind to everyone because you never know what a person is going through. What we know about someone's life from the outside is only a tiny segment of what their life is actually like, which is why we need to always check in our friends, extend a helping hand to those in need, and overall, be sympathetic and kind to others even if they seem like they're fine. I hope you have all learned more about PTSD and some valuable life lessons I have learned through my experiences with it. Thank you.